What's going on guys, Plastic Beach X3 back here with another One Piece duel video and this time we have a Katakuri mirror match between me and my friend Money. Uh, it's a non-tournament match as you can see. There usually aren't little kitties at locals. But my cat got in our camera so I kind of had to, you know, throw this in there. His name is Happy. And he loves his burger fishing toy. But let's get into the uh, actual match. It's going to be a Katakuri mirror match. Um, the I'm on the right, my friend's on the left, He, I chose to go second, he goes first in a pass and then swings nine at life, looking at his own life. The versions of our deck are, uh, the only difference is that he's not playing Peckoms, and I am, he's playing Brulee instead. Uh, I look at his life and swing seven just because he left it at the top, and it was a cracker, so. Um, I'll play three for Para Sparrow, pass turn. Para Sparrow is like the best card you could be playing. It's not Opera. Uh, he'll go 8 at the life and I'll take it, then play a Para Sparrow. And this is always the worst turn for the Katakuri deck, is the 6 Dawn turn, which is kind of why. There are arguments to play Big Mom. It's like you just play the same list, but the Big Mom leader. So like the six dawn turn, um, you could switch up your effects, or you could uh, pick you know pick up a life and then play it, or put it back down onto your life, and then also play a four drop. However, uh, the problem with that is that the way I play the deck, at least, I try not to take life super early unless like obviously he swung. 9 and then 8, I'm not countering out of those. Um, so, like, in this specific situation, the Big Mom Leader would be better, but it's fine. Like, the seven, the 7k seven usually comes up a lot more, but I have been testing the Big Mom deck, so... For that reason. Of the, like, the 6th on turn, you can do stuff. Um, but I just play a Peckoms and a Pair of Sparrow. He swings 5, 5, 5, and I counter out of everything and then I'll burn my own life with uh, his effect with the seven drop mom's effect like I said I'm trying to counter out super early I'll go and then just clear board otherwise so like five into the cracker it dies five into the pair of sparrow it dies he searches a 2k pudding and then five into life with peckoms another reason why I like peckoms is because it makes up for like the lack of pressure you have on those early turns Besides just being an extra three drop you can play going first. And like that extra 5k swing is usually enough. Um, Katakuri back to seven drop. Like the best thing Katakuri is going to be doing in this matchup is probably that right there. Unless you like Katakuri is my Katakuri then. And that's like another reason why I run two of the seven drop and three of the eight drop is because in the mirror match caught occurring your opponent's caught curry whenever you go to nine and they are on eight is like pretty uh vital in my opinion i'll go seven to the peck arms and kill it eight into the uh Pero sparrow i'll look at like i'll look at top three at an opera He decides to switch where he puts uh, what he does with his leader effect. And then he plays a share Hoshi for five, so his hand must be god awful. Whereas mine is kind of cracked. Uh, I'll go five into the cracker because our lives are even. Like, if he defends it, I'm just going to swing 5 with leader and then 8 at it. So, it's going to die. Eventually. This turn. So, he'll just let it die. I'll go 5 at life. Counter out and 8 at life. 
counter out and then I'll 10 drop the seven drop off the top, uh, which is why he wanted to switch it. Uh, he took it back so that whenever the 10 drop, I 10 drop on this turn, it'll burn the seven drop and not, uh, I believe that's a cracker since I put it to the bottom at the very beginning of the game. He'll play his own 10 drop and then I'll play another 10 drop. So we're in the battle of the 10 drops. So I'll go five at life, eight at life. And then 12 at life, he'll take it and no cards on hand to hit the cracker trigger. And then it's pretty much game from here. Going into game two, I'll go first. Um, putting for a 10 drop, the most important card in the matchup and like the best card in the deck. So always want it. And then five at life, hit a cracker, discard a thunderbolt, and then I'll play a pair of sparrow on curve. He could go big, double attack. I'm not sure if that's the right play, though, because I kind of, if, if I'm him, I'm trying to, like, build up my board to contest the board. Uh, you can just leave the cracker standing, honestly. I'll uh, take the first life, and then the second life, uh, I will hit a cracker out of trigger. He'll go seven at life, putting this top card to the bottom. And I'll 2k, 1k, pass turn. So now I can start swinging into his cracker. Seven into the cracker. And then seven at life, double attack, eight at life, double attack. I'll take both, nothing, nothing. And then seven at life, look at my own life, leave it. Two and one, pass turn. I'll go five into cracker, I'll counter out. Three for pair of sparrow, three for pair of sparrow on a six on turn. Again, the most lackluster turn in the whole deck. And now I'm at seven, I can, uh, if I have it, play seven drop. Just to keep tempo, but it looks like I don't have it. I'll go five at life with pudding. Five at life with pair of sparrow. Just constantly pressure life, make them make decisions over whether they should take their life or not. Um, cause usually it's like, cause like even if they counter, they're getting less cards out of their hand and they're not gonna have resources whenever I burn them with 10 drop. And if they do take it, I have the long game. The longer the game goes, the better for me. Um, so like, it's not even a big deal if they do take it. I can just, I mean, I have bodies that swing, so. Five in a pair of Sparrow, let it die, use the effects. Grab a 2K counter and then five into a Cracker. I'll 2k counter, and then 5 into pudding, and then 8 drop back to Pero Sparrow, pass turn. Looks like I have 0 top end in my hand, which is rare, but it happens. I'll go 9 at life, he'll counter. I think about this one because I'm like, what if he hits 10 drop mom off of the pair of Sparrow that I'm trying to kill? Like, what do I do? I think about it for a while and then I decide that my hand can handle a 10 drop. And then I should probably just clear the pair of Sparrow. Cause I would, yeah. I don't want him to like, if he already has the 10 drop in hand, like he, I'm gonna go at life, he takes it, discards the other card, have double five, five with leader and then eight drop plus the 10 drop already in his hand. Assuming he has the 10 drop in his hand, which like, you kind of have to assume he'll go eight into the cracker. It dies five at life. And then he likes, he eventually does search the 10 drop off the pair of sparrow. But I planned for that with my own 10 drop. I decided that it wasn't an issue. I'll go five at life. He'll play pair of sparrow, then five at life. No counter in hand whatsoever. So I take that game. Uh, and GG's, make sure to subscribe to Placid Beach X3 for more One Piece videos. Peace out.